and welcome back to Tarot Tats and Tea. I'm not going to lie to you, it has taken me over a week and six attempts at making this video. I have just not had any luck. If it's been something that I'm not satisfied with, then it's been technology issues. And then when the technology issues more or less sort themselves out, the file was corrupt on my computer that I had recorded on my phone in here. So I'm going to give it one final chance and then I may as well give up and then wait till there's another topic. <laughs> right, last week we saw the 1st of May, which we would celebrate either as May Day, as Beltane, as Belchina, and it was also my father's sixth anniversary away from home. So for me, May Day could be sad if I allowed it to be, but I have managed to, over the last six years, build it into a day of something what can only be described as beautiful positivity. And what confirmed this for me on May Day, I was actually recording this video, or what was supposed to be this video, in here, standing at my workshelf over there, that's my potting shelf over there. As you can see it's all built, it's a working potting shed now, all that needs to be done is for me to decorate the walls and to put shelves up wherever I want them. I have shelving units in, um, but I just want to make them less plain looking. And I have tins of paint here, green as you can tell. <laughs> anyway, I'm digressing. I was here last week um, about to talk about what I'm going to talk about and um, also I had the job of repotting a pineapple plant that I have. Now the pineapple plant is, is in the house and the pineapple is so heavy that it's pulling the entire plant over and it's lifting out of the pot. So I needed to find a way to stabilise that. So I thought, well, if I take this into the potting shed, work on it in the potting shed, and at the same time, look at the books and look at the tarot that I want to look at to put up here for, for, for you guys. And I can do it all in one and it would be a nice exercise to have a very mixed video. So. I was explaining that it was also my dad's anniversary and that I I um, always associate butterflies with my dad sending me a little reminder that he kept his promise and, promise and he's watching over me. And um, I always get that feeling that he is, he is around and about just because he's such a strong individual and such um, a powerhouse really in our lives. And any time I feel things are going wrong, I just talk to him and everything seems to drop into place. So I was discussing this on um, the 1st of May, last Wednesday, and um, three weeks previously I had been um, filming a film on the um, the Neon RWS um, uh, and um, from by Tarot Collectibles and their Sibylla deck, and I had taken them, put them away, and I still haven't actually put that video together. I might have to re-video re that one as well actually with the technology issues I've had. Anyway, here I was in, in, in between the, the three weeks previously and last week I've had this potting shed emptied, I've brushed everywhere, I've resorted everything because things were building up and building up but I had so many seeds that were germinating that needed to be moved to the greenhouse, some that needed to be potted outside etc etc. And um, I was talking about the Sibylla and about the RWS and how I associated butterflies to my dad, etc. And uh, I happened to move a large potting um, plant pot that I had in the corner over there. And like I say, I'd had this shed cleaned out, there was nothing on the floor. But then I looked and I thought, what the heck is that? It was a bright pink card and it was my Sibylla card with the picture of the butterfly on it. Care, carefreeness, it says on it, and um, I thought, I, I didn't even know I had, I had dropped a card in the potting shed, even though I had cleaned out and I had nothing on the floors in here. All I can think of, it must, when, when it dropped, I must have put um, a plant pot on top of it and not realised it was there, which I can't understand, it's bright pink, and if it's stuck to the bottom of the, of the um, pot, so when I moved it back in, it was there, and um, you see, it couldn't have fallen out of the box from there to there. I must have dropped it at some point because I carried the what I thought were full boxes of the RWS and the Sibylla cards back into the house. So when this butterfly card 
appeared after me just explaining that I associate butterflies and their visitations to me at this, you know, any time of year as, as a message from my dad. The fact that this card that must have, must have been either stuck to the underneath of a pot or I had dropped it, been walked in on someone's foot, I don't know. But the card was here on the floor in the corner. So if it was never carried in under a foot or under a pot, then it can only be put here supernaturally. Um, the thought of that is wonderful, but um, realistically it's probably stuck to the underneath of something and um, it had made an appearance the moment I felt that I just needed to have a little reminder. Yes, Elaine, I'm watching you. I am there. No, it's not beer. It's not Budweiser. It's apple juice with ice, I promise. <laughs> So that has been a big part of this last, um, I'm still getting over it <laughs> a week later. <laughs> um, and um, it, it, it just really threw me, but it's been a wonderful experience. So what did you do for Beltane or Beltane? Um, I had friends around here on the, on the Wednesday evening. We lit a fire in the fire pit and we did a meditation. Then we roasted marshmallows over the fire and Later on we had a couple of glasses of wine and we laughed and chatted right into the um, late hours of the evening, around about I'd say half 11, 12 o'clock. It was lovely. I had um, four, four of the friends over and it was really enjoyable. So that started the month of May off really well and um, I also, um, that, that week, the Monday, I had come back from Wales and I brought back some goodies that I thought I would share with you. The first couple of books and then we'll look at tarot. I want to then give you a little bit of an update of a book that I'm reading that I have shown you before but we only did a quick peek at it and uh, then I have a giveaway at the end of this. So if you stay till the end and um, have a look at the giveaway and pop your name down under you know in the comments if you would like to be entered into the giveaway. So first of all I carried everything home in this beautiful huge basket it's almost like my Mary Poppins ba um, carpet bag <laughs> and, but it, it, my sister made me this my beautifully talented sister who is so good and makes me loads of things and there you go that's it it's huge it's strong and it carried everything that I needed so I'm going to put this it's going to be like a never-ending Mary Poppins bag so what are we looking at first we'll look at the two books first that um, I purchased over in Wales the first one is Meet Me at the Surface by Jodie Matthews, okay? That's Meet Me at the Surface by Jodie Matthews. Both of these books I was drawn to because of the places in which the stories are based on. This one is based on um, a story in Cornwall and I have family in Cornwall, strong family ties to Cornwall with my aunt and my cousins, and my auntie and uncle and my cousins. And um, that's where my parents used to take us for our summer holidays as children. And we spent many happy hours on the beach of Prey Sands, Penzance, St Ives, and going up the River Fell. It was, it was, uh, uh, they were brilliant holidays, great memories. So being, because it was based on Cornwall and I liked the sound of the story, I picked this one. Okay, so everything that comes from the ground has to go back down eventually. A haunting ode to Cornish folklore and the secrets of the place we call home. A book where the language feels like hands reaching into the soil, where landscapes feel alive, where sentences, houses and memory are suffused with the uncanny. An astonishing, astonishing book by an astonishing by a special writer. Tom de Freston, author of The Wreck, wrote that review. Assured and beautifully written, an astonishing debut. Cornwall is here in all its vivid and magical glory. And that was written by Charlie Carroll, author of The Lick. So let's have a look at the blurb on the inside of the front cover and see what the story's actually about. Merrin grew up on the wilds of Bodmin Moor, raised by her mother and aunt in an old farmhouse. Here the locals never leave the village. They fear for the future of their farms and cling desperately to the folkloric tales woven into their history. Except Merrin, who escapes to Manchester for university, briefly untethering herself from her past. When Merrin returns home for the memorial service of her ex-girlfriend Claude, she finds her childhood home stranger and more secretive than ever. She is sure that her mother is hiding something. The villagers are hunting on the moors at night, but for what? And then there's a notebook 
found in an old chest of drawers full of long forgotten folklore somehow linked to Claude. So that sounds like it's going to be full of magic, full of adventure, full of fun. Well, creepy fun. <laughs> now, the next book is The Shadow Key, and The Shadow Key is written by Susan Stokes Chapman. She also wrote Pandora. So the gold shines brightest in the dark, The Shadow Key. Susan Stokes Chapman. And there's something mysterious about the village of Penhelig. Will unlocking its truth bring light or darkness? Again, let's have a look at the blurb on the inside. Mirionid, 1783. Henry Talbot has been dismissed from his post at a prestigious London hospital. The only job he can find is as a physician in the backwaters of Wales, where he can't speak the language, belief in myth and magic is rife, and the villagers treat him with bewildering suspicion. When Henry discovers his predecessors died under mysterious circumstances, he is determined to find the answers. Lynette Trezellian, the unconventional mistress of Plas Helig, lives a lonely life. Her father is long dead, her mother haunted by demons which keep her locked away in her room, and her cousin who treats her with cool disdain. She has had no choice but to become fiercely self-reliant. Lynette has always suspected something is not quite right in the village, but it is only through Henry's investigations that the truth is about to close, sorry, is about to, those closest to her will come to light. A truth that will bind their destinies together in ways that neither thought possible. So there you go, that's the Shadow Key. And what drew me to this is the fact that it is a story based on, in Wales, I have a beautiful robin. Oh, I was sitting in my cherry tree then, and Sam scared him off. Bold. Sorry, I got distracted there. So it's, this is a story based in Wales. It's not often that I come across stories based from my in my home country, and uh, of of a genre that really appeals to me. So this is something that I think I'm going to really get my teeth stuck into too. And again, that's the Shadow Key. Now, let's have a look at a book that I am halfway through. And the reason I'm stopping here and now, and I'm not waiting till the end, is because I just can't wait to share it. I'm really loving it. Sam, can you go down, please? Now, this is by Emma Tors, Ink, Blood, Sister Scribe, a bold new novel from an extraordinary new voice. So this is the book, okay? Ink, Blood, Sister Scribe. Now, a bold, yeah, sorry, sorry, I read that. So, follow where this novel leads and you will be lost in a bewitching spell, a book of magic about books of magic and a bold new novel from an extraordinary new voice. Two sisters tasked with guarding a library of magical but deadly books, a shadowy organisation that will risk anything to possess them, even murder. And if, like me, you're a fan of Holly Black and Lee Bard um, Bardugo, pick up this book at once, and that's by Kelly Link. And this book is so many things at once, an adventure, a puzzle, a twisty thriller and a tender romance. I adored it, and I have to agree with all that. It is all that. It is a thriller. It is an adventure. It is based on magic. It is, it feeds your well when it comes to wanting to, to have a book to really get your teeth stuck into. It's remarkable. I love it. It's, um, I don't want to go too much into it because it's, um, I don't want to give any of the plot away, but I will reread the blurb in here to give you an idea what it's about. You can see my bookmarks here. I sh I'm hoping to finish this by the weekend. So let's have a look. Joanna Colote lives alone in the woods of Vermont, the sole protector of a collection of rare books. Books that will allow someone to walk through walls or turn water into wine. Books of magic. Her estranged older sister Esther moves between countries and jobs, constantly changing, never staying anywhere longer than a year, desperate to avoid the deadly magic that killed her mother. Currently working on a research base in Antarctica, she's found love and perhaps a sort of happiness. But when she finds spots of blood on the mirrors in the research base, she knows someone's coming for her and that Joanna and her collection are in danger. If they are to survive, Esther and Joanna must unravel the secrets of their parents that their parents kept hidden from them. Secrets that span centuries and continents and could cost them their lives. A spell-binding, edge-of-your-seat thriller, ink-blood, sister-scribe, 
is a mystery steeped in magic and dark ancient powers that will appeal to everyone who loves books, libraries and an all-consuming page-turning read. And it's a yes to all. I really recommend this book. It's It's got me on the edge of my seat. So what's next on the agenda? A tarot deck. Pagan Tarot, the new edition. Okay. It is by Gina M. Pace. And I have to say, I like the art. I like the deck. Um, there are some cards, I think, okay. But that's just part of the deck and it's you, you either like it or you don't like it and I will give a heads up here there's nudity alerts on, on some of these cards so if that's not your thing you may want to fast forward so this is a, um, a tarot um, deck 78 cards and a, a book that's got 160 color pages in it it is a lovely book the book is brilliant I like the way it's set out and um, it's got a very simple introduction in the beginning then it goes directly into spreads, the major arcana, the minor arcana, court cards and the appendix. Now the court cards in this deck are named quite differently to court cards in the um, RWS tarot or, or uh, the Thoth and things. The court cards here are the elemental instead of the page, the novice instead of the knight, the initiate instead of the queen and the elder instead of the king. Um, which is actually okay for me um, in previous years if someone had said to me oh here's a lovely tarot deck and it did have these different names I don't know if I'd have taken it because I was funny like that now and I think it just comes with the fact that you just go grow to accept new decks and, and they either pull you or they don't well this one I was drawn to and um, besides the going into all the cards you then get a rundown of, of Wiccan beliefs and walking the path which is just a nice bit of information for for people um, who want to know that little bit more so that's in the appendix about paganism and Wicca and um, taking that route in their lives the cards are pr produced by Los Garabeo and they're the traditional Los Garabeo um, uh, quality card the suits are pentacle swords, wands and chalices and um, the world card is called the universe card and was there any more that we thought that was changed? No, no, just that, just that one. So let's have a look at the cards. I'm not going to go through the whole deck, I'm just going because the pagan tarot has been around for some time. Butterfly. The Pagan Tarot has been around for some time and this is the new edition so um, I don't think there's a lot of change but this um, I, I, I don't have the older deck so I wouldn't be able to tell you from what I've seen from other walkthroughs I don't think there's too much change. What I like about this is that we've got the devil, can, uh, the devil here and it's quite, it's quite different, look at that, I don't know if you can see there the spirits are sort of alongside her um, but there's two folks standing behind her so there that would be for definitely for you to use your intuition as to how you would read that as a devil card for me to me it looks like that the people in the gowns behind her are more like the devil that she's tied to this cult like um, environment and spirits from the past are there saying look we're here listen to us we're here please listen don't be led astray but um i'm not sure i haven't read the book so i don't know it could i could be right i could be totally off the mark but i do think with this deck there's a lot of intuition that would be needed here's an example of one of the minors that's the ten of wands just turn the side so that the shine's not too badly on them our elemental of ones, which would be like our page, the novice of ones, a lot of ones here considering it's been shuffled, and the initiate. Now the nudity alert for the tower for the tower card. Now you would look at that and say, well, that doesn't represent the tower as we know it. No, it doesn't. But remember, this is the pagan tarot. 
and looking at this, you've got this person walking away from this. This lifestyle is not what she feels is for her. Um, the way I would read that, is that somebody she likes having an affair? Is that, uh, you know, getting involved in, in um, activities that are, say, morally corrupt? Um, some would think, well, it's not morally corrupt, it's celebrating whatever. However, for me, that would not be my vibe. For me, it's sort of morally corrupt and this person's walking away because people that she might have trusted or thought she could trust have let her down and it's like a tower moment. So that's that's the vibe I get from this card. Um, I, so it's basically people revealing their whole truths, their whole selves, losing all, um, letting their masks drop and revealing their true personality. And that could be hurtful for some people. It could be um, very life changing because the disappointment would be raw, would be painful and it'd be a case of walking away from what she thought was, but isn't. And it's destroyed life, relationships, and she's having to move on, start fresh. They've got the Elder of Wands. Uh, minor nudity alert for the star. Uh, the star is that, that shining person. It's like she's seeing herself shine, looking back at herself. They, they sort of reflect each other. Um, the moon, definitely the practices that I get up to around here. <laughs> Hey Sam, in a minute. He was so desperate to sit on my knee, but he has to learn. Not right now. And no doubt he will try and climb up on my knee for sure. Sun card. I love this judgment card. This is um, sort of two pagan witches, modern day pagan witches, past life regression. And she's doing, she's sort of being regressed back to sort of this 1600s where she is witnessing the burning and, and the hanging of witches sort of almost like um, the, the Salem witch trials and it's sort of looking back and, and looking at how things went wrong and um, what to do how to move forward how to change and how to change perception and looking at your own life were you one of those that were judging you know do you judge is it time you start the universe and here we have our nine of wands Oh, I, I know that feeling very well. My That's my current situation with my car. <laughs> Nine of Wands. Okay, nearly there, but not quite. We need a little bit of work done before we can go any further with our journey. The Two of Swords, I find a little bit on the eerie side because the mask on the Two of Swords is a pair of hands from a faceless figure, you know. Six of Cups, I think, is lovely. And I do believe that the mum here, she could have a vase in her hands, but I think she's also scrying before putting her flowers in the vase. If you have a look there, see if I can get that really close. The Three of Swords. Here's an Ace of Pentacles. I like the Aces. The Aces are all lovely. All very simple, just like that. Everything is set out on one of these benches, so they're all very similar. And, oh, here we go, we have the cups as well here, the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Wands. And then if we come across the Ace of Swords, oh, here it is here. The Ace of Swords. The Fool. Six of Pentacles, the Elder of Swords. So I'm going to call this, bring this to an end. I'm not going to go through them all, as I said. Here we have the Seven of Pentacles. Again, we have that symbol there. They're pagans, pagan symbols, which I will read about in the book. And we don't have it on the Nine. Here's the Nine of Pentacles. And the Initiative of Swords, we have our Ten Pentacles. I love the Magician card, here you go. The element of Pentacles. 
and our novice. Our High Priestess card is also beautiful in this. I love the High Priestess card. It's almost like you're being watched over, protected. And all the way through this deck, you will find in the cards little symbols everywhere, and particularly in the top corners, okay? Um, similar symbols. It's, it's um, see, the symbols in the top, written in the top corner there, don't you see? Four of Wands. The Empress is beautiful. I find our Five of Wands here not as aggressive as our usual Five of Wands. Everybody's sort of walking in different colours in different directions and um, <laughs> it's different. Very colourful, very nice, very pretty. Um, six of Wands, we're all back together now, celebrating after maybe a small disagreement. The Emperor. Let me see what, um, particular. oh, the Hierophant is another one that I found a little bit, the, um, one that would, you'd have to use your intuition and what do you get from that. There's a lot I could discuss about this, it brought up loads of questions for me. But um, I don't have the time right now to go through them all. If you've got the um, Pagan Tarot and there's anything different in the, in the new edition that you can spot, would you please put comments below? I'd really like to see that. Um, I'm going to put these away now. Um, I, like I said, I'm not going to show them all because it's, a, it's quite a common deck. Um, but it's just one that's come new into my, my ownership. Um, the wheel is very good. Look at that, the modern day taking the wheel of pie chart on, on a computer screen. So that's that, the Pagan Tarot. Um, do I like it? I actually do. I like it very much. It's a deck that I'm going to have to sit with. Um, and all the, I'm, I am going to read the book on this. And usually I don't do that. But I want to read the book on this um, because it just appeals to me. And also I then want to sit down and write my own intuitive um, readings of the cards. I like doing that too. So that's the new um, edition of the Pagan Tarot by Gina M. Pace. Now I said before we started that I have a giveaway. I do. And my giveaway is this. I ordered this book um, and I have received a second copy as a gift. So I'm keeping the one that I was sent as a gift and the one I ordered, I'm not going to resell it. I thought I would put it up here on my channel as a giveaway. So if you would like to be put into the draw for the giveaway of New Directions in Tarot, decoding the tarot illustrations of Pamela Coleman Smith, forward by Mary Kay Greer and written by Scott Martin. This is the book. This is very recently out. Um, like I said, I have two copies and it would be quite mean of me to keep a second copy on my shelf because, um, you know, well, it would. If, if, if I'm not going to be using it, I think it's only fair that um, that I and somebody can use it, that I post it out to, uh, to gift it to somebody. So in uh, because I can't gift it to one particular individual, um, I would make uh, put a draw here on my channel. So if you would like to be in with a chance to win this book, please pop your name underneath the comments of this video. And um, at some point in this week, within the next couple of weeks anyway, it depend, I will actually leave it for, what are we today? The 7th of May. I'll give you 10 days. 10 days, 17th of May will be the closing date. So any names entered after the 17th, won't be put into the draw because I can only let it go on for so long. So until the 17th of May, I will accept names. I'll put those names into like a wheel and uh, we'll draw, draw the names. And uh, I'll post this out to you. I want you to then private message me. Um, I'll pop my, um, no, I won't pop my email there because I don't want to, my email published. But um, if you go to Tarot Tats and Tea Facebook page, you can um, message me there or if you know how to message on YouTube message me that way because I'm sure the YouTube will let me know that 
um, you know, the winner that is, sorry, the winner, message me with your details once I've drawn this, okay? When I've done the draw, whoever wins it will make contact somehow and I'll get this book out to you. Okay, so I'm looking forward to getting that out to somebody, somebody who would appreciate it. It's um, a book, you know, as it, it is as it says, a new, new directions in tarot. Books like this, I think, are absolutely ideal for first-time readers, for people who are just starting out in tarot. But I think books like this are also remarkable for people who have been reading for many years. And it enables us to, to, to look at cards differently, because it is possible to become rather staid and, and a bit worn out in our tarot reading. You know, it's very good to be able to say, to look at it from another viewpoint and that's what this book does it's a workbook as well as a reading book you can read from it but there are parts in here where you can take notes okay and carry out activities there are exercises to do right the way through the book and um, it's something that i think is going to be handy to have on your bookshelf so that's that <laughs> i will love you and leave you I'm working, well, just to share with you very briefly before I go, I'm working through um, this book here, which is um, Tarot Time Traveller. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, I'm working through it slowly but surely, and there are many exercises to do, but it enables you to then start reading playing cards as well as tarot cards. It's really good. Um, you know, it's, it's when you're quiet, you've done all your chores, you've done what you need to do for the day, to spend time out using your cards for something different. It's really good. Those are my notes. And that's why I've got them in the potting shed, because that's where I'm going to, I'm going to work on them in a minute. So I'm going to pop these all away into my Mary Poppins bag. That's what I'm going to call it, actually, my Mary Poppins bag. And this will be waiting to be posted out to some lucky winner as soon as I've popped this up and you've popped your names down there. 17th of May, final day for putting your name in the comments. Whatever you're doing today, have a lovely day. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here, thanks for your support, and uh, I hope life is treating you all well, um, and that uh, things are looking hunky-dory. Come on, say bye-bye to everybody, Sam. Oh, say bye-bye, everybody. I can now have some love off my mouth. Look, hey, Sam, look, say hello, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's my boy, I love you too. So from me, Sam and Sally, who's in the garden, have a lovely afternoon. Bye now.